Shalom Lekum to everyone. Good evening. It's a nasty green. I know it's kind of late, but I don't know if anybody's watching live. And if you're not watching this live and just watching by way of being recorded, um, it is kind of late this evening. Um, but due to my schedule, it is what it is. We are back tonight. Me and my wife, thank God for my wife, um, with part three. Part three of the teaching of the sit seat or the prayer show. This is part three. If you haven't seen part one and two, I'd encourage you to look for it out there on my wife's Facebook page. Have y'all worked that? Um, and watch one and two, and that'll definitely bring you up to three tonight. So, Father Yahweh, we bless you. We thank you for this time you give us to come. Before your throne this evening, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day that you've made. And Father, before we go any further, Lord God, we do come in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, repenting of all our sins. Gracious Yahweh, we repent of every known, unknown sin of all unrighteousness. We ask for forgiveness right now. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Father God, we pray that you teach us by your spirit this night. It is in Yahshua's name we pray. Hallelujah. I believe we left last week um, on slide 10, which would be the one before this one, um, talking about uh, Abraham. I believe we did say something concerning Abraham, um, name being repeated twice and Jacob's name being repeated twice, showing the emphasis on the Sadio, Sadio being repeated twice bringing all the emphasis, uh, emphasis on passion and, and endearment and so forth that the Lord is calling us to be um, towards him and his commandment, his will. So I know we covered that last week, so we're going to move forward to the next slide. Sit seats. The sit seat also means a lock. The sit seat also means lock of hair. So this, like I said, this sit seat here, the, the more older version, this, the newer version, means a lock of hair as well, okay, of hair. So anyone who's locks or anyone who, or anyone with locks, anyone with locks on your head um, should realize they are walking in a covenant to do righteousness. Now, I know a lot of our brothers and our sisters that may have locks, they may not look at it like that. They may not you know, understand it like that, uh, or respect it like that. Some of them just doing it as a fashion. But during biblical days, when one wore locks, um, I know the one that have locks, they don't want me to say the word dread or dreadlocks. I'm learning that, you know, the word dread is not the proper word to use for the ones that's wearing locks. So I apologize for those that have the locks for me even mentioning the word dread. Amen. So uh, here we go. So if you do have locks, it means this word sitsi, sitsi, sali yo, sali yo tav, it means a lock of hair. So anyone with locks should realize they are walking in a covenant to do righteousness, like a righteous life. So they should realize that them walking around with them locks on their head is just like walking around with sit seats on your garments. Because they're there according to biblical standard, according to biblical purpose and principles, they are there to show you or be an example or reminder like these are on our garments, that hair locked up like that is a reminder for you to walk righteously. So I should, well, I'm about to say something, but I'm going to say it anyway. I shouldn't see no dreadlock or dreadlocks or anybody with locks, whether it be women or, or man, with um, living unrighteous. That don't mean you're perfect, but you walk around with a constant reminder of to live holy. Like a righteous life. Put hands to do good. So that means, like remember, sit seats means live a righteous life. We looked at that earlier um, <clears throat> in previous teaching. Um, putting your hands to do good, etc. Good deeds. Seek and desire. Chase after God. Chase after righteousness. Chase after living holy. That's what that means, etc. So let's go to Ezekiel 8 and 3. Ezekiel 8 and 3. Uh, let me see. 
Ezekiel 8 and 3. Give you time to get there. Ezekiel 8 and 3. And it reads, for those that have your Bible, get your Bible. If you have one, get one. And those that have sit seats or prayer shawls, get one. Um, it would be good to have when we start talking about the wine. We haven't gotten to the wine news yet. <clears throat> okay. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock. Now, if you look up that word lock in the Hebrew, you're going to see the word tzitzit, tzitzit, okay, in the Hebrew. Back again. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God, or Elohim, to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate, or the inner gate, that looked toward the north, where there where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked to jealousy. Once again, going back to the beginning of the verse, and he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock. If you look at that word lock in the Hebrew, you're going to see that word is sitsi. Okay? You may see it spelled a little different than this, but it's still the same word sitsi. Okay? Now, let's go to Zechariah. Uh, 8 and 3. Zechariah chapter 8 and 3. Now, I'm not saying that this passage here is talking about the sit seat, but knowing that the sit seats were put on the, on the kanaf or the borders or the edge of the garments uh, for the of biblical people, and even today, but going back to biblical times, they will put on their regular everyday clothing on the kanaf, the kanaf, that means the border, the edge of their everyday clothing. With that in mind, visualize brothers and sisters with sit seats on their borders of their garments, their regular clothing. With that in mind, let's read this verse. Verse 3 of chapter 8 of Zechariah. It reads, Thus said the Lord, I am, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Uh, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Zechariah 8 and 23. I know that won't sound right. What am I doing? Zechariah 8 and 23. Here we go. Sorry about that. Zechariah 8 and 23. I tell you, it's been a long day, y'all. It's been a long day. And um, I kind of got in my feelings a little bit today because I was working, y'all. A lot of y'all know I'm a contractor. And I noticed, I don't know where it lost it at, but I noticed that one of my sit seats on my, on my belt loop was gone. So, thank God for his grace and for his mercy because my sit seat got lost in the shuffle somewhere when I was working. I don't recall where I lost it at, but that goes back to the grace of God, the mercy and grace of God. So that's why I said earlier, and you hear me saying every so often in a lot of my teachings, that some that have the Torah we must teach the Torah with grace. And some that push grace, 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 you must add some law or Torah to your teaching. They both go together. You can't have one without the other. Okay? So here we go. So Zechariah 8 and 23. It reads, Thus said the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold, of, take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, Jew, Yahudian, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God or Elohim is with you. So the verse, the, the point I'm going to bring out here is it says, Even shall take hold of the skirt. That word skirt there in the Hebrew is the word kanaf, that means the border. 
of the garment. What, what was commanded to be put on the border of the garment? The sitzi. So it's safe to uh, interpret this to mean that ones from the nations will grab a hold of the sitzi or the kanaf skirt that has the sitzit on them and say what? Let's go back to the Bible. See, I take hold of the skirt of him and say, saying, we will go with you for we have heard that Elohim or God is with you. Now, I don't want to be interpolating. I don't want to be um, isogeting the verse. So I'm not putting some there that's not there. I'm just saying it's very likely, very likely that this kanaf here or the edge that the nation will grab a hold of is the sitzi because the sitzi represents the commandments. And also, we, we, we may get, not get into it tonight, but we may start into it. The sitzi also says the Lord is one or Yahweh is one in the windings. This particular winding here, I can teach how that means or represents Yahweh or Yahuwah or Yahawah or Yehovah, how our brothers just want to pronounce it, is one. I can bring it out in this kind of winding that looks like a lock. I can't really bring it out in this kind of winding that also looks like locks. Both will look like locks. But for the sake of the teaching, I'm going to use this kind of winding. Okay? Remember, like I said earlier, the scriptures, if you look at my previous video on this on the sixth teaching, the scripture doesn't tell us how to make the windings. It tells us to put the fringes or the sitzis on our garments. Tradition is where it kicks in as to how one desires and chooses to make it. But this particular one points to the 613 in the numeric value. This particular one points to um, Yahweh is one or the Lord is one. This particular one points to the uh, first five books of the Bible, the Torah. This particular one points to um, Yeshua being wounded or beaten with 39 stripes. This particular one points to the four that represents Messiah. This particular one points to the eight, which represents a new, a new beginning. This particular one uh, represents healing and all of this. Okay, in this particular one. I can't break down this one, but I can work with this one. So, here we go. So, maybe talking about Sitsi. So, like I said, Zechariah 8.23 may be talking about the Sitsi as well. Now, like this here is the old picture or old drawing I did years ago before we took it and did this with it. And also, uh, like all the writing here that's in here, hand, I hand wrote this one years ago before we did this um, PowerPoint change to it or put it into this kind of teaching form. Um, all the writing here, you have already um, covered. I've already covered it in the previous slides. And if I haven't covered it, I'm going to cover it in the slides behind this one. But this, I just kept this a part of the slideshow. Um, because it was the, one of the first ones I did, so I didn't want to do away with it. So here we go. So here we go. So now, these sit seats here, here, it means the Lord is one, or the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh, or Yahuwah, Elohim, Yahweh, Achad, the Lord our God, He alone is God. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, he alone is one. A lot of us try to remember to pray that a minimum, a minimum of three times a day. I would encourage our listening audience, if you have not done so, this is not the teaching for the night, but I would encourage the listening audience, um, if you're listening live or if you're listening by way of, by, um, listening to a recording, this recorded, being recorded, I would encourage you to shema the most high three times a day at minimum. Don't just stop at three. 
do it all day if you can and able to, but at minimum three times a day, in the morning, in the afternoons, and in the evening. And I may do a teaching on that later on another time, um, how we glean that from the scriptures. Okay? All right? Or how we glean that in our culture. So here we go. So the Lord is one. So remember, like I said earlier, Tzitzi, Sadi Yod, Sadi Yod, Tav. The numeric value is 600. Remember, let's go back. No? Sadi, 90, Yod, 10. Sadi, 90, Yod, 10. Tav, 400. You add them up, 600. Remember that. Remember that, okay? Okay, so the six uh, hundred is six C, the eight threads. Now, really and truthfully, it's four. This particular style is really four long strings, four representing the meaning Messiah, the Messiah. The number four represents the meaning Messiah. So it was four long strings, really, and they was taken. And push through this hole here. And when they overlap on this side and that side, overlap, that was comes to be eight. So really it's four long strings representing Messiah. When they push through the hole, overlapping, it comes to eight, representing a new beginning. Okay? Here we go. So remember that, represent a new beginning. So you have six plus the eight. Plus the five. There are five double knots. One, two, three, four, five. That represents the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, the word of Elohim. It also represents grace, chamash, grace, chamash. The one, two, three, four, five represents the Torah. And the grace, all of this is in this sit seat. 600, the numeric value for 60, eight strings, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Represent grace, represent Torah, double knots. So you add the six hundred, you add the eight strings, or eight threads rather, and five double knots, you have what? The 613. We believe that there are 613 commandments in the Old Testament, and we believe that there's 1,050 commandments in the New Testament. So you try to run away from the Old Testament, so I ain't trying to build no law of commandments. You can run to the New Testament, you got more in the New Testament, you got the old, 1,050. So here we go. So now, there's 248 positive commandments. Represent the 248 joints and ligaments and bones or whatever in your body. That represents your body. The 248 joints or ligaments or bones in your body. The 248 represent that. Okay? The 365 negative commandments in the Torah, that represents the days of the year. The days of the year. Okay? So what is the function? What is, what, what is the message in, the, in this... Uh, 48, 248, and 365. Keep the Torah commandments, follow Yahweh, serve Yahweh, serve His commandments, serve His mitzvahs, serve His laws, serve His statutes, which all of them have different meaning. Um, serve them with your whole body, your whole soul, mind, every day of the year. We are to serve Him, follow Him, be devoted to Him, our complete body, Every day of the year. Okay? Perhaps you got that. So now, in between, in between the wine, in between the knots, one, two, three, four, five, between, depending on who made the prayer, depending on who made the sit seat, who made the, the city or the tassel, the fringe, depending on who made it, these, the ones that 
I've learned and ones that I've had in my possession, not all, but some, they have been made with a certain amount of wine is in between each knot. A certain amount of wine is between each knot. And there are four sets of windings. One, two, three, four. Sets of windings in between each knot. Once again, number four represents Messiah. Because all these point to Messiah. Okay? So, here we go. So now, in this first set of windings, some traditionally... Make seven windings around. In the second one, some traditionally make eight windings, windings around. In this third one, some traditionally make 11 windings around. And in this last fourth one, some traditionally make 13. You hear me keep saying traditional because you're not going to find it in the scripture. You're not going to find it in the scripture. So, so you have seven, eight, 11 and 13, and we should see that over here. So we have right here 7, 8, 11, and 13. Now, remember, like I said earlier, this sit see here says the Lord is one. The Lord is one. That's one of the things, a many things it says and represents. So now, here we're going, this is how we're going to look at that. This is how we're going to show that. Okay. So now, now, like I said, I'm not here to try to push a particular name of the Most High. I've been asked questions like that, you know, and I think I was asked that the last time I was on, you know, I, I don't proclaim to know his exact name and how it was pronounced and all of that. So when I say Yahweh, it's traditionally, I uh, traditionally have learned to say Yahweh or just call him by that particular function or that particular wording, um, but I'm not... I'm not locked in as if I can't uh, pronounce his name a different way. As long as I know we talk more, we have the same description and the same function. So a lot of y'all know what I mean by that. You'll hear me teach on it. But so now, but for this teaching, I'm going to use it Yahweh. Okay? So now, you have 7, 8, 11, and you have 13. Now, I'm going to go ahead of myself, but we're going to back up to it. I'm going to go ahead of myself, but you can go back to it later on. You add them up, you can get 39. You can add up this 7, 8, 11, 13. I'm going to go ahead of myself, but you're going to, but just be a little nugget ahead of time. That's count come to 39. How many lashes did Yeshua take for us? 39 lashes, we believe. Or well, I can I can factually say, strongly say, he did. And I can show you that why I believe he did that. Okay, so now. So the Lord is one is in it. So let me show you how that breaks down. Yah. Yah. The spelling for Yah is Yud Hey. Yud Hey Yah. You add up the Yud Hey, it comes to 15. So this these first two here. The first two is saying Yah. The seven and the eight is saying Yah. Seven, eight equals fifteen. So let me let me show you how that fifth where that fifteen comes with for us Yah. Okay? Yud hey. Okay, let's 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 count. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Val, Zain, Chet, Tet, Yod. That's ten. That's 10. Okay? Make it a little bigger so you can see it. Okay? You have, once again, what I'm doing, I'm getting the yah. Yod hey. Come on. This right here is yod hey. Now, this is the late Semitic spelling of the, 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 the sacred name. This is the millisemitic, and this is the early, meaning this was the way his name was spelled the first time that we know of. Okay? This is the Paleo-Phoenician spellings, okay? That would have came before this block language or block writing or, or style of writing that came later. 
But the fact is, they all still carry the same function. What I'm looking for is the function of each letter. The function of each letter, the numeric value of each letter, the, the, the meaning of each letter, and so forth, so forth. So, but now, like I said, this is the first, the earliest Semitic, or early Semitic. This is the middle Semitic. And this is the late Semitic. So now, what we're spelling now is Yud, hey, Yud, hey. Yah, the Yah, okay, that's the Yah. So once again, Yud, Hey, uh, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yo, Ten. That's the Yo. Now we gotta do the Hey, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Five. There you have 15. So you add these up in this style of language. Like I said, won't be able to get it in this one. I like to see somebody teach it and what that means. I haven't seen one yet. And I'm quite sure one is out there. I know this means locks. I know they mean locks, but I don't I don't know. I haven't done no teaching on this style. If I have one out there, I'm, i I praise God for it. Here we go. So, so you'd you'd hey or ya. The numeric value is 15. So you had the first set of windings. These two right here. These two right here. That one, that one is saying ya. It's saying ya. Okay? Now, this one right here is the third one. Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahuwah. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahuwah. Okay? Now, Yahweh you get now yud hey vav hey. Here we go. Yud hey vav hey. Yud hey vav. So that's Yahweh. Or Yahweh. Or Yahuwah. Yahweh. 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 Y'all know how we roll. So, so here we go. So the yud or the vav hey numeric value is. 11. Like I said earlier, this set of windings here, the third one, traditionally has 11 windings around. Okay? I pray you're following me. Those that are live or be watching by way of recorded, I pray you're following this. Okay? So we got Yud, 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 I mean, I mean I'm sorry. Yah, wait. That's a Vav, hey, so now let's get that, which is this way here, Vav, hey, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, hey, Vav, okay, six, and you have to get the, hey, Vav, hey. Olive, bet, gimel, dollar, hey. Vav, I mean five. You got what? Eleven. There you go. So now, that's the eleven right there. This set of wine is right here. I'm going back and forth because I want you to get it. I want you to get this. So what you have is seven, eight, yah. you Hey, 11, the third one, 11, Vav, hey, 11, okay? So you have Yud, hey, Yud, hey, Vav, hey, or Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yahweh, or Yahuwah, okay? Now we got this last set of wine. Come on now, we're getting it now, we're getting it. Okay, with the last set of windings is 13, 13, and it's Achad. Remember, the Lord is one. Achad is one, means one. Okay, now, so, and this is 13 windings. So this winding here has 13 in it, and it should spell the word Achad, meaning one, meaning 
Yahweh is one. Yahweh is one. Okay? So now let's get that. Echad. 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 Okay, here we go. The way you spell Echad is a Aleph, a Chet, and a Dalit. A Aleph, a Chet, and a Dalit. Aleph numeric value is one. So Aleph, one. Okay? The Chet numeric value is eight. It's eight. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, He, Vav, Zayn, Chet. It's eight. I don't got to write that, but just in case. Just in case. So the Aleph is one. The Chet, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, He, Vav, Zayn, Chet. It's eight. And the Dalit is four. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit. Four. There you go. One plus eight plus four is what? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, you're getting it. So now, so you have Aleph, one, Chet, eight, Dalit, four. Equal 13. 13 set of windings in this last bottom. 13 set of windings in this last bottom. So what are you saying? What's being said? Here we go. Yeshua. For the Messiah. Yeshua. For a set of windings. The Messiah. The five double knots. One, two, three, four, five. The Torah. Grace. The eight strings. A new beginning in Messiah. A new beginning in Yahweh. A new beginning in his word. A new beginning in his mitzvahs, his Torahs, his commandments, his statutes, his ordinances, these precepts, decrees, everything. A new beginning. And icing on the cake. Last but never not least, but not even the last, I ain't gonna work like that. Yahweh is one. The Lord our God is one Lord, or the Lord our God alone is God. There is, that's what that means. He alone is God. He alone is Elohim. There is no other Elohim. Yahweh alone is God alone by himself. And add them up, seven. 8, 11, 13, you add them up, you get 39. Yeshua took on 39 stripes. The woman that issued blood knew that the Messiah was going to come, like Malachi said, with healing in his kanaf. I'm going ahead of myself. We can get to that woman. We can get to even more than that. It may not be tonight, but just stay in tune. Pointing to the sit seat, knowing that this woman, this woman knew what scripture said that this means healing. This means the commandment. He sent his word, his commandments to heal. All of this and more is in this city. Okay? So, we wear this as a devotion to God, as a means of identity with our people. It is a commandment directly from Elohim. Okay? In between the five knots or four areas, windings, which I said. The, new, the number of windings were Pacific, and I went over that. I went over that. Now, what time is it? Been? I pray if you're getting something. Um, let's see. And yeah, once again, this is the old way I did it before I brought it to this point right here. This is the old way I did it. And like I said, everything on here, we've discussed it. Um, we haven't discussed Deuteronomy 25 and 3 yet. And we haven't discussed um, 
um, certain other passages up here, but we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. This brings up the subject of the snail and so forth, so forth. Um, we're going to get to all that if we haven't got to it. Last time we'll be repeated. And this, this like a little prayer show, uh, it show the eight strings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The five double knots, one, two, three, four, five. The four sets of windings, one, two, three, four, represent Messiah. Five double knots represent the Torah, uh, represent the grace of God. The number eight represent the new beginning in Christ. The set of windings, four in between, represent Messiah. And of course, we have the menorah. The menorah is the, uh, we're, putting the, we're putting the tabernacle. And also, the menorah is an ancient symbol or sign representing Israel. The star David, or the Megan David, is a more modern, new, uh, newer, uh, traditional sign used to represent um, uh, Israel. The menorah is, is, is more earlier, was first used to represent Israel, and is still used. It's still used to represent Israel. In our temple, we have a menorah, as well as we have uh, the star David, or the Megan David. Um, I know some people don't really have too many thumbs up concerning the Megan David, star David. Um, I have no problem with it. That's not the teaching for the night. Um, but you can get with me, and we can talk about that if you want to. But anyhow, so we're going to look at this and on another slide. Can we talk about the longest thread, the blue in color? It's called the Shamesh, or servant. See how it's now. And I said this earlier. This, this thread here, this blue thread, is wind, wound around these white ones. So is there serving, serving what? This Sitsi is there to serve. Remember I, say, remember I said earlier, Yeshua, came the first time, where we at? Uh, yeah, so he came the first time, Shemesh, Shemesh, the son of righteousness, would come and heal his wings. Okay, he came the first time as Shemesh, um, um, the light of the world. But he is the light of the world. Shemesh means light of the world, the brilliant one. And he came the first time as a uh, to Shemash, Mash. This is the Chaldean meaning, meaning to attend, serve. Yeshua came as the greatest servant the first time. This word here is Shemash, Shemash. That's the same thing. That this blue thread is called. It's called a shamash. It's from a chelizon. That's a snail that came up on the sea every 70 years. The Israelites would go to the Mediterranean Sea and get this snail. And they would smash it. Um, um, and if you smash it, I believe, in the daylight, a blue color comes. If you smash it kind of like at nighttime, a purplish, violet, purplish color may come forth. So it's still the same snail that produced the same blue either way. So it may look two different shades of color, but it's still... Uh, fulfilling that commandment in the scripture, okay, and but the snail was called a uh, the mother snail called a, a, a chelizon, and the blue uh, was called a techelit, the blue dye that is that comes out is called a techelit, okay. So now, but we're gonna we touched on that. I'm about to wrap it up for the night. I know I kind on got on kind of late, but due to the schedule, prayer for you'll follow it. Um. Okay. Yeah. So next week we'll pick back up on this slide, slide number 14. Um, and I want to say this. Um I was asked to do a Facebook Live, and the topic that I was asked to um talk about or ask the audience and I want to make sure I'm wording it correctly um, some pertaining to the Sabbath the Sabbath and New Testament believers um, keeping the Sabbath it's some it's some some of them I don't, I don't have my uh, I don't have it in front of me I'm trying to remember on top of my head exactly how it was worded but it was definitely worded somewhere dealing with concerning the Sabbath and concerning New Testament 
Oh, but oh, I can say this. I can say New Testament. Hold on. Let me get it. Oh, Paul is in it. All right. I know y'all like, how he be doing it? We do what we gotta, what we call make it happen. We gotta make stuff happen. We just make it happen. We just bless the Lord for. Okay, let me find it. Um, uh, well, well, I try to find it while you continue. Okay, to I got it. I got it here. It says, as Believers of Christ, Jesus, should we keep the Sabbath, Saturday, as their worship day? I'm going to say that once again. It's, as believers of Christ, Jesus, should we keep the Sabbath, Saturday, as their day of worship? Okay? So, I'm going to, after I wrap up, I'll probably be wrapping up this prayer show teaching next Wednesday, if not next Wednesday, next Thursday. So, so, so we're looking out for it. If you can come online or come on live, it'd be great. Um, I'll probably be wrapping it up next week. Um, and depending on how long it takes, we can go into this subject matter here. And for those that keep the Sabbath and you have an opinion about the question that was asked, be ready to share. For those that don't keep the Sabbath, um, and if you have an opinion about it, if you feel like you want to share something, please be ready to share. You know, we 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 we'll get space for anybody who want to share. And of course, I'm gonna share on, on the subject as well because I was asked about it. So once again, um dealing with the Sabbath. We'll talk about that next week. Um I think I should be closing out this teaching next week. That'll be um teaching number four. Sit seat, prayer show. Um, teaching number four will be next week, unless the Lord um, said differently, and I can't come on for whatever reason. Um, so th this here is the conclusion of part three, so stay tuned for part four. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for all those that are listening and those that are viewing. And Father, if there's any, Lord God, that are viewing that, Lord God, most important of all, their soul is not right with you. Father, I want to make sure, Lord God, before I leave this, this airway, before I leave this Facebook um, teaching, I want to make sure, Lord God, that I definitely give the opportunity for one to do the greatest miracle, and that is to receive you. So that be you. If you're listening, if you're watching, and if you have not yet accepted Yeshua or Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, the Messiah or Christ who has come and who is soon to return, you need to do the greatest thing you could ever do, and that is accept him into your life. You don't know when you're going to take your last breath. No one knows, for the most part. Some people on death row and some people have sickness and illness, they can kind of time it. But at the end of the day, still God only one that really knows. God only really knows. And you don't know when you're going to take your last breath. So don't gamble with your life. Don't gamble with your life. Give your life to Him. And let's do that tonight. Or we watch it during the daytime. Let's do this tonight. Repeat after me. Say, Lord God, I repent of all my sins. And I ask you in Yeshua's name, Jesus' name, to save me. And Yahweh, I know, oh Lord God, your word says that if I or a person shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or Yeshua, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, Come into my mind. Lord, come into my soul. Lord, I repent 
of all my sins. And I ask you to save me. And I thank you for saving me. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, look forward to seeing you next week, this time, a little bit earlier, Wednesday, hopefully. But God bless. Shalom Aleikum. Your brother Joe. Love you. Bye-bye.